we uh <laughs> hey this is mark black here and uh this is uh, mark teaches music and this is our live stream we're going to try to do this every wednesday night at uh, seven uh we may add another one about improvising on a different night just by the way it's just an idea uh but uh, this one uh which is to play and sing uh is about answering everybody's questions uh, and problems and difficulties, however, whatever words we want to use, uh, to uh, all their issues about uh, making music, being a musician. Uh, not, not esoteric questions about, uh, you know, well, I'm making up, but you know, uh, like what is it like to play the sack but uh, versus the oboe and uh, on and on and uh, things like that or uh, a wonderful well, I thought it was a very interesting topic uh, by a guy named Adam Neely uh, who's got a good really good channel and uh, my point is only to say is he had is how to rank your polyrhythms so we're <laughs> gonna have those topics uh, not because it's not a good topic but because we're about playing and singing you know and, and so taking you and me from here to here and as far as we can go and uh, that include really so many things like uh, technique and skills and uh, performance, getting rid of performance anxiety, how to perform better, how to perform in the top of what you're able to perform, how to figure out how to select um, both songs and approaches, you know, to the songs that you like. Uh, so uh, anyway, so the point is, is about playing and singing. You know, what I'm talking about the whole channel, Mark Teaches Music is about that and not about, um, well, I would answer questions like, what's the difference between the Baroque era and the classical era, you know, like that, but because that seems to me that that would have a, a, a pretty large uh, bearing on um, on your playing. For example, you, you do play classical music, which is a, a time period uh, from uh, 17... 50 approximately to uh, 1825 you know you play that music differently than you play the romantic era uh, 18 is all approximate 1825 through 1900 or so and the baroque era which is the era before that 600 through uh, 750 uh, so i'm just saying you know we would talk about that but we're not trying to be all like all um like 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 we would talk about tuning you know but the point would be uh, where tuning comes from, how we tune like we do. It's not the only way to tune, you know, things like that, but not like, uh, which is a, nothing wrong with this topic, um, but you know, like, here's this totally weird tuning, man. You need to tune your guitar like that. And like, oh my God, what a head trip. This is so weird. So we're not trying to get into that. We're just trying to say, uh, or we're not just, we're trying to say, you know, I want to play better. I want to sing better. I want to be as awesome as I can be um, from a uh, technical, uh, physical, uh, emotional um, performance every part of you know I play the guitar I play the saxophone I play I sing I'm a great singer you know uh, all those different I'm not talking about I'm those things I'm saying that's what we want to do and so you, you say you say those things about yourself and we want this to be about uh, you know various people I mean uh, various uh, us being able to achieve those things you know whatever it takes uh, and some of the the uh, info about uh, uh, that we could talk about from a musical standpoint doesn't necessarily contribute to that. That's so anyway, so that's my point. So uh, I'm going to start, I'm going to wait one minute before I officially, I mean, I'm started, right? But I'm going to wait one minute before I officially get rolling just because in, in case there's any other people fixing to show up that, uh, you know, just kind of like roll with everything, actually. Uh, performances and concerts and, and all of it, try to give everybody five minutes, which is probably dumb on my part. You know, I should probably just wait. I mean, just start right on time later by suffer. However, I always thought it was good to have that little buffer. And the buffer's over. <laughs> okay, so look. And so the deal is, now look, I am answering questions. Uh, and, and that's the format, unless I came in here and decided um, we want to talk about this, I want to talk about that, you know. But in general, I'm here to answer your questions. And it could be questions about your specific lessons with other people, lessons with me. Uh, it could be, um, I'm talking about um, not why does my teacher suck, but like, uh, I'm talking about the lesson with me, like I can't figure out this uh, 
chord or this progression or whatever, this kind of stuff. I can't figure out this, uh, but, but just random questions. So uh, if anybody has a question for me to answer, you need to type that in the chat. I believe I can see the chat. It says, it says live chat. So it, you know, so hopefully it's live and you know chatting. So if you got any questions, you need to shoot that into that uh, on the chat thing, so that I can be sure and uh, answer those. And otherwise, what I'm fixing to do right now, I'm just going to grab these questions from the past, and uh, I'm just going to read them. You know, I'm, I'm not going to read them. I'm going to answer them. So uh, okay. So here's a great question. Uh, and that is, uh, what is the easiest instrument to play? And then the next question is, what's the hardest instrument to play? Which, okay, so two things, uh, and they're kind of opposite ideas. And again, this is our, our Mark teaches music, and to play and sing is supposed to be pertinent to your playing and singing well. It's not supposed to be like, wait, here we go. It's not supposed to be, well, in 1642, don't you know that they used a different tuning for, so, okay. That's really good stuff, but that's not what we're after. We're after you like you're you're stuck in the song, or you're stuck in your progress. You can't sing any higher. You you have a skinny, puny sounding voice. How do you change that? So we're, the idea is to be practical. However, this is a great question, and at the moment I don't have anything in my chat to answer. So I'm going to answer this question, which is what's the easiest instrument to play, and what's the hardest instrument to play. So there are instruments like, for example, the bassoon, with the thumb, your old thumb, pulgar. Uh, on the, the the each thumb on the on the uh, on the bassoon, for example, has got ten keys. Each one, ten, ten different keys. So you're like a bassoonist is not going. He is doing this like this compared to a saxophone or a flautist. But he's he's more than anything. He's going with his thumbs. He's going like thumb crazy. So I'm saying there's a physically difficult instrument. Another crazily difficult instrument, and there's many many ones. Uh, is the harp, the regular concert harp, not the uh, not the uh, Irish harp, only because the Irish harp is set. You know, it's like they don't change. I mean, they can change, but they don't. They're not planning on changing their notes. But a, a classical a harp, as in you, um, you know, in, in a movie or in a, a, a two in every symphony uh, uh, of the major symphonies. Uh, the point is, is that okay? Every one of those strings, there's an A string. <laughs> And a B string and a C string and a D string, and uh, and every one of those strings has got a pedal on the floor, and you can make that all all the D's, not one D, all the D's D sharp, or all the D's D natural, or all the D's D flat, and so if you like, so the consummate hardest thing in the world to do on the harp, for example, is to play a chromatic scale because you'd be like. It's like killing roaches, cockroaches, ha, ha, you know, trying to get all those, all those uh, changes, you know, it's D, D sharp, E, is it F or E sharp, you know, and that's, um, I won't go into that. So anyway, the point there is, so just as an example, a very hard instrument to play. However, and the, the saxophone, for example, is a very new instrument, the flute, um, well, let's go with the saxophone, it, relatively speaking, 150 years old uh, or so, and uh, so it's got uh, all of the development uh, for from two, three, four hundred years in metallurgy and key placement and um, sounding holes and where to put the octave, uh, not the key, which is an ergonomic question, but the where to put the hole. Uh, to, that's a uh, uh, intonation question and things like that all the benefits of hundreds of years of making instruments like an instrument like the saxophone is pretty much incorporated uh, and um, so so the saxophone for example is a pretty easy instrument to play um, and um, just that I'm just talking uh, like the, the the guitar for example if you're just gonna strum say I shut my baby I don't like her much. Uh, it's pretty simple to do that. Uh, if you say, oh, I want to play uh, Bach, or I want to play incredible lead solos, or I want to play jazz, then it is up to the difficulty. But in general, my uh, philosophy, and I'm, I love um, to play, I have played many instruments, and I love that I can play many instruments, uh, is that um, it seems to me that what is required of an instrument is, um, 
adjust depending on how hard it is. So we don't expect many trumpet players, for example, brass players, all the brass players, to be going. We're really not expecting a trumpet player to do that. We are expecting flautists to do that. We are expecting saxophonists to do that. Um, and uh, so I'm saying, so the ease of the instrument to play dictates, hey, you better play fast. And then this other instrument's really hard to play. And then uh, it's like, well, we don't expect as much out of that instrument. And, and, and of course, there, uh, every instrument has a, um, a standard literature, has elementary literature, basic literature. You're like, this is, everybody should play this, but it's, a lot of it's very simple. And it has like, you know, this is the, the cool solo and this is the cool uh, symphonic thing. And then it's got its virtuoso uh, literature, meaning that not a whole lot of folks can play this music on this instrument. So I'm just saying, that you'll see violations of what I'm saying in the sense that you look at the virtuoso um, literature of any instrument, then you're gonna see like some really, really hard stuff because we're really pushing uh, what people can do. But if you, um, in general, the difficulty of the instrument uh, dictates what that instrument has to play. So I don't, I don't think it's I don't think it's like, wow, this instrument's really hard and this one's really, really easy. And so, you know, these guys are amazing. These guys suck. It's not like that because it's like, what we ask of those two different instruments changes, you know, based on how hard it or easy it is to do. So, all right. Now, I, I don't see if, if you've chatted, by the way, you chat, chattees. If you chatted, I don't see no chats over here. So I'm going to go to my next question, and I'm going to go to, uh, this is a, a different source for this, so that I'll kind of keep it all mixed up. And uh, let's look at that one. So, uh, okay, so here's a guitar question, you know. What chords should you learn? Now, this goes for the piano, uh, the mandolin, the guitar, the um, ukulele. I'm trying to think of my chording instruments. Um, well, that'll that'll do. That'll do, pig. <laughs> so, uh, first, you should look at the kind of music you like. And I'm just talking about you're just looking, literally, just looking at the music. You know, I like country music, and, and listen, I love country music. I love uh, blues, I love rock, I love jazz, I love many, many kinds of music. And I mean it and from a practical standpoint, not as a, you know, country so stupid. Not like that. So the idea is that, um, and you're looking at country music, you say, this is what I love, I love this kind of music, and you, whatever it is. And so you're looking at that music, and again, as a generalization, um, uh, jazz uh, it takes uh, it, the, the language of jazz, the, the things we want to hear, uh, is more complicated. We want to hear more things, so we need more chords, more kinds of chords, more, more versions of chords uh, as an extreme. That would be an extreme in pop music, not in classical music. Triumphs it, really. Uh, if we look at all of classical music, if we look at a lot of classical music, it's very boring and simple. Uh, and same thing for jazz too, for that matter. But but in terms of the extreme, we'd have jazz and classical in one extreme. Wow, there's a lot of incredible weird stuff. Progressive rock, um, some bluegrass, um, and then on the other extreme would be music. And it's not dumb music, but it's music that the point of the music is to be um, experienced. We're supposed to listen to the music and think this guy's is a serious, sincere guy. He's not a he's not a he's not a stuck up you know, guy with his degree, he just came in from work and started singing this song, you know, he, he's sitting on his back porch, porch singing this song, or he's sitting in a bar singing this song, and so, you know, blues, a lot of rock, country music, uh, what are we supposed to get from that? When I say, man, he's so sophisticated. <laughs> no, we're supposed to say, this guy's just open up his heart, just tell me about truth, and so we wouldn't expect a lot of sophistication in that music. So, anyway, we had, uh, uh, classical jazz over here in one extreme. We expect a lot of complexity because of what the language of the music is. And then we hop over here. I see Christy Terry. I'm going to answer that, read and answer that question here in just a second. And then we have a lot of simpler music, but it's not because the people are dumb. It's because of what the purpose is. Most people do not want to know how their computer or their air conditioner works. They just want to play. They just want their air conditioner to work and they want the computer to work. So most people, most people do not want complicated I got to think about this music to listen to it they just want to just want to put on the thing and listen to some music it's fun it's cool and that's awesome there's nothing wrong with that can you whistle and that'd be great yes you can whistle can you snap your fingers and just like a song I just like this song yes 
Absolutely. And you should accept that. We should all be like happy about that. Anyway, uh, point is, what chords did you learn? So you look at the music you like, and you're kind of trying to come up with a basis. For example, uh, country music um, would have... Um, you could probably play most country songs by using, and I, this is for, um, I call it acoustic uh, rock or, or uh, open open chord based music, which would be, uh, depending again, whether it's country blues, but you know, country blues, uh, acoustic rock, country music, and a lot of the chords are open chords. And if we did the open chord, uh, come out just as an example, then we would use the chords of the keys of the word, Caged, C A G E D. Uh, the chords in the key of C, chords in the key of A, chords in the key of uh, G and E and D. If we could play the chords, and I'm talking about three major chords and three minor chords in those keys, we'd be covering most of that music. Now, would we have, depending on the song, a chord or two here or there? Man, I never learned that chord. Yes. Uh, but in general, and I'm just making up a number, let's say that's 20, 25 chords. You learn those 20, 25 chords. You can play, you can play lots of modern rock, uh, on and on, country music, all this kind of stuff. And so, and, and that would be, now I'm just saying specifically, it would be like, you know, six major chords, six or eight minor chords, six or eight uh, uh, dominant chords, which is a sevenths, A7, B7, G7, and not minor seven or major seven, those are different kinds of chords, but just, you know, letter seven, letter seven, B7, A7, D7. So, uh, let me have the elixir of life out here. Here it is. So anyway, um, if that was the kind of music. Now, if you were like, and let's just give an extreme. Let's just say if it was um, um, soul, R&B, uh, classic kind of stuff. It's hip hop, depending on the, how techno it is, you know. Uh, but the point there is that, um, so then you would need... Uh, Approximately, but what we probably is move a little bit over into from the chords of the word cage, C H E D, those keys probably add some flats uh, because in music that's piano based, it tends to be on the flat thing. So guitar players like uh, this is on the open uh, chords, uh, life that that musical life. Uh, they like chords with open strings, and they sound bigger. They do sound bigger. There's no issue. There's no you can't. A discuss of that. I mean, you can't question that. That's the truth. Uh, because the open strings, the open strings vibrate. So you're like, wow, this is such a big, full, fat sound, as opposed to a chord with closed, or a, a, a bar chord, or all the, every string has a finger on it. So that's going to be a little, little, um, it's just not quite as resonant. Can't be. So anyway, um, so the, uh, so look, if you did R&B, for example, we would probably tend, so piano players, your piano player, piano players like uh, flat keys. And that's because those black keys on the keyboard, if you can imagine there's three and two and three and two, and it's easier if you're in the flat keys to play the black keys because you just move your hand up and you're just playing a bunch of the flat keys. And lots of, if not all, of Stevie Wonder's music, for example, is in the key of D flat and B and these keys that use a lot of black keys. Not because, mostly because he's blind. And he's a piano player. And it's just like, hey, I can feel those things sticking up and I got my hands there and it's great. And so piano players tend to play, if your music is piano based, then you're going to tend to be the same, say, five, six keys, but maybe you'll move over from C, A, G, E, D, I'm sorry, from C, A, G, E, D, those keys, to perhaps C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, you know, G. So it's like moving over to two, three, four flats. Um, okay, so now I'm going to look at Christie's. Over here. Uh, chord exercises. Okay. Well, 100%. So I, if I haven't, if anybody here is listening, you should all have chord exercises from me. So these are the three chord exercises that every uh, guitar, mandolin, ukulele, you should all be doing these three chord exercises. And you should do them every day. And uh, I just happen to have a guitar over here. So let me just killed my stand uh, and uh, these uh, these they're probably on everybody's assignment sheet but at the different different times I don't necessarily go over them like I should and this feels like this is turned 
And I can't be bothered by those technicalities because I'm doing the live stream. Live stream. Live stream. Got to be live. Live stream. Okay, so the three exercises are the repeat exercise. And and you got to think about your hands. Your hands are little, lazy, unskilled slobs. And so you're doing stuff and your hands are going like, fingers are going like, what, what, what? <laughs> and so you got to be like, you know, you're teaching them to be, you know, you know, assassin fingers of death. And, and again, you got three smart fingers and you got two stupid fingers and you need them all. So anyway, you're doing these exercises, not because you're stupid or because you got, you must practice, but because of what we talked about in our uh, music seminars, um, uh, Sunday? Yeah, Sunday. Uh, about comfort. <sighs> we're practicing things because we're trying to get comfort and natural. And so we're trying to assimilate the things we're learning and not be like, okay, if I'm just like a crazy man, I can do it. But we're actually trying to say, hey, you know, I can do this easily. And that's just focusing on things. So pick an accord. Um, let's say a minor nine chord. And this is, well, since I know Christy is a jazz player, uh, I'm just going to pick a, a here's a, here's a bar chord, right? This is a major chord because this is shaped like an E chord. And so it's from this chord. So moving that up to this, I'm just putting it here except a fifth fret. Somewhere around in the fifth, fifth, seven, eight is the good sweet spot on the guitar in terms of what feels easy to do. So I'm going up here. Got a major chord. I'm going to make it a minor chord. That's a minor chord. Then I'm going to add the seven by picking up this finger. And because we're going to be all swanky, all bougie, <laughs> I'm going to make it a major minor nine. You know, it sounds all jazzy, and it is, you know. And, um, you know, and uh, there's many, many ways to make chords. So, anyway, so I'm just doing this. Don't worry about how I'm doing it. I'm, I got it, but, but I have a bar. Then I'm putting my third finger uh, two frets up above the bar on the fifth string. There's the minor seven. And then I'm putting my little finger on the first string on the same fret. So that's a minor nine. And because this note is an A, this is an A minor nine. And this would be a G minor nine. And this would be a C minor nine. Very jazz sounding, oh yeah. So anyway, and, um, all right, I could go off on that for an hour, but I'm not. Okay, so anyways, here I'm trying to make this chord, and I just learned it, and I don't know it. So first is the repeat exercise. I make the chord, I pick my fingers up, and I go right back to it, like that. And I'm going to do that ten, five, ten times, because my fingers are like, we hate you, we'll never do that. And so the, you're saying to them, no, no, you will do what I say. So you're teaching them to get back. I have to bring my fingers up because if I just do this, and I want you to see me, those fingers are not learning much. Those fingers are, are being very comfortable, and they're saying, hey, man, you know, thank you for not moving. And that's not what's going to happen. You're going to go. The chord before this chord was this. I did it. What I'm saying, there's not going to be any great connection between these chords so you got to be able to go to them cold so anyway that's why we pick our fingers up only in an exercise the minor nine and then so you do that five ten times and remember we're trying to work a, a chord or an exercise whatever a song part of a song we're trying to work it until your body begins to assimilate and starts to say oh uh, oh so when you go to play the chord your body's kind of going ah, that's that at that chord yeah yeah, that's it. You know, like that, and not like, wait, wait, it's so hard. Which is normal, right? It's normal, but we're going to stay there until it starts to feel that way. Now, can you do that in a day? I'm just talking about practicing real quick. That is, get that comfort. Probably not. So we're going to, we're searching for that comfort, for that assimilation and practicing the chord. But we're saying, you were also saying, I got a clock. How long am I going to practice? before I go to my song, before I go to ad-libbing, the other things that I want to do. Well, you know, you got to work that in. So I'm giving you a time, a time like say five times, 10 times on the, each chord, you know, pick it up. And I'm just on that one chord, okay? And that's it. And if it's half the speed, if it's like this, that's fine. If it's like this, I'm just saying, we're not talking about 
anything. The second thing is the mix exercise. And uh, the mix exercise is um, where you have a string of chords. You have to write this out by hand. And you write a list of chords. And you write, uh, and again, uh, in this case, we're not talking about A minor 9, G minor 9, B minor 9, B flat minor 9, A minor 9. We're not talking about that. We're talking about a shape, and then another shape, and then another shape, and another shape. You know, like that. So we're talking about shapes. Uh, so you got this list of shapes. And so you're going through, and I'm just going to say, you know, A minor 7, E, A with a flat, A uh, flat 6, you know, and uh, D major 7, you know, and G major 7 is made differently. So I'm going through that list. These are all my new chords. Now, let me interrupt myself and say that, uh, yes, I am saying you don't practice enough. No, I'm not saying that. Uh, but I am saying, so here on chords, again, you're looking at all the things you have to do. I need to play a song. I'm not saying you have to do all these things. I'm saying I have to play a song. I would like to ad lib better. I want to learn these chords. I want to learn these scales. I want to learn these licks that are really cool. How many? How much time are you going to practice? Well, if you're practicing three hours, four hours a day, then uh, my gosh, you're going to have a lot of progress. You're going to have a lot of things. If you're practicing 45 minutes a day, then you're going to have to be really selective and smart and you have to be like, I, I'm going to have to wait to get to this thing for two months or something, you know, uh, because I'm not generating enough skill to get to to get to that thing, you know, and I, it's not going to help me to play scales and chords that I don't really know. That's not going to benefit me. What's going to help me is that I really know them in here, really know them in here, I know them in here. And then, then it's like, I may not know much, don't know much about the chords I play. I may not know much about the chords I play, but I can play them well. And they feel natural, so I get to them quickly and that kind of stuff. So, uh, but anyway, the deal with your chords, the, the, the three exercises we're doing, we're only doing these with the chords that we have problems with. When you have done this chord, and you always go to it, it's never late, it never sounds like this. <laughs> And uh, it comes out on time. It's not a problem. Quit practicing it. So it's like a little conveyor belt. You got this chord. And you're working on it for a week, a month, you know, five months, whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, and uh, then when you say, hey, you know, this thing always comes out right. I like how it sounds. Sounds great. Quit practicing it. And probably what that means is your both your skill level has come up, but also you're using it in enough songs that it, it's kind of got its life of its own. Like like planting a little tree and you're nurturing it and may, helping it go along, and then after a while, it starts to be able to stand on its own. I'm talking about that chord. Like I'm gonna remember that chord. I'm using that. I put it in songs, and, and they don't even say don't. They don't even say play A minor nine. I just gonna put one in because I'm cool. So. Um, Anyway, so that the second exercise is the mix exercise. You have to write them down. If you wait on your own and just try to make up stuff, then you will get in a little circle and you'll play three chords. And then you'll stop and go, oh, D major 7. And then you go, hmm, hmm, hmm. You're like this. So this is very ineffective practicing. So just jot a list of chords down. Run through that list forward, run through that list backwards, one hit a piece. Notice that when I'm playing these chords, I'm doing like this. That was it. I'm not doing it again. Because I already practiced it where I had to repeat it. This is not the repeat exercise, this is the mix exercise. And then, you know. You know, so it's like practicing these chords through a list one time. Just trying to get used to, and when you, we wait on a song to learn these chords, there's a problem because in a song, song is only going to go, it's going to be in a key, and you're only going to be following the minor 9, minor 11, well, it's a, a half minor, you're only going to be following this with this in this song, I'm just saying the song's going to go like this, so you won't, what if it went... like that. Well, you weren't prepared for that because you only practiced in the song. So we're trying to mix up our little exercise to see these chords in different scenarios. The last exercise you need to do is each string. And you make the chord, your new chords that you're working on, and adding to them, and you go, 
you um, here it is the chord and I'm playing and I'm going and I'm saying hmm you know and I'm going to do a different one because this would be I'm doing different chord types and when you hear a note like that that note it's almost dead right it needs to be resonant like that so when I hear a chord that's dead like that a note that's dead and let's say the chords could sound like just like this 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 bad <laughs> I think it sounds that bad you know really terrible so again this is each string exercise so you're picking each string so you sit there and you try to figure out why is that chord so bad or, or, or just one note's bad whatever it is and the four things are now the way you need to be hitting the string is just behind the fret that's the nicest sound I can make. That goes for your scales too. Which means you have to stretch your hands out. So anyway, when you're making a chord, you're trying to put each finger right behind the fret. This is pretty good placement. And I want to just, by the way, your fingers do not do that naturally. Your fingers are not going to go, like if I put my, watch, look, I'm trying to not think about anything except putting my fingers here. So if I put my fingers here, this is a, a, ostensibly a D, it's not really a D. Only this finger right here is in the right place. Well, that one's pretty good. And he's a little back. So I mean, I have to adjust my fingers to get them in place for the best sound. And that's a long process of learning to get those guys to stretch out and go places you want to. So anyway, on the each string exercise, and I'm just going to pick an E7 chord. Just well, uh, let's do an E. What is this? This is an E13, I guess we'll call it. Like that. So I play this chord. And those here to hit it. So the four things that are usually wrong: I'm not close enough to the fret. I'm too far back. I'm on top of the fret. So I got to get back behind it, not too far back, which is number two. Uh, I'm just not pushing hard enough. And then the normal thing, the most common thing is that fat part, the disgusting fat part of my finger is killing the string below. So I'm playing this one great, but it is killing. I got to get it up. So there we go. So there's my chord exercises. The uh, repeat exercise, same chord. Again, one strum. This is not, look, how many times did I play this chord? Once. Stupid, don't do that. So I'm gonna go once. And if I need to do it five times, it's this. Once, twice, three, four, five. Now the only time we're gonna do this, again, this picking the fingers up is on this exercise. In a real song, when I'm going, I don't, because I'm having to change strings, chords, I don't have to worry about picking my fingers up. So the repeat exercise, the mix exercise, we write down a list and play through the list forward and backwards because we're trying to teach our hands. Now we taught our hands self how to get to the chord and play the chord. Now we're teaching ourselves get to the chord without preparation, without hearing it six times. And then the uh, each string exercise, which is where we're, we're clarifying, making for a great sound. So here's a uh, beautiful chord. E6, I mean an E9, no 7, and uh, or an E2. That's a good, sorry, not an E9, sorry. You can say an E add 9 or an E2. This, this is fraught with portents, though. So easy to make this like this. <laughs> so I gotta catch. So the each string, which is repeating the thing. Okay, now I have thoroughly beaten that question to death. And I don't see another new question here, so I'm going to go back to my list over here. So uh, let's look at this. Okay, so now this is a good question. Now we talked about this in the music seminar. Uh, exactly. And like, how do you know when you practiced enough? And, uh, and the answer is when you're dead. Uh, <laughs> no, 
The answer is uh, when you have assimilated, it becomes natural to do the thing that you're trying to do. So you're trying to play a difficult chord. When your hands go to the thing that they want, that you want them to go to, and it feels natural and comfortable, then you have practiced enough. Uh, when you can play that uh, pattern, and it feels natural to do it, you practiced enough. Uh, and of course, what our, our problem is, we get into the dilemma of <laughs> I'm learning this thing, and I gotta perform it here, you know, at this event. You know, uh, uh, for myself or or a, a uh, what do you call it a, a recital, a concert, and so here I'm learning, and so it's just like it's I'm not really ready for it yet, and now I got to play it, as opposed to uh, it's assimilated, I know it so well, I chuckle, <laughs> you know, on this pattern. So um, our problem is that is that we're not really we uh, we frequently find ourselves needing to have that mastery of the chord of the lick of the whole song. And it's early, but still, our goal is that uh, is it, I would say it, uh, again uh, assimilation or comfort or naturalness. But the idea is that my fingers want to go to the thing that I'm needing to play, the really cool lick, and I stay there until. And at first, remember your fingers are like, ah. you know, they got their own thing. I, mean, I don't do that. I don't know how to do that. I can't stretch out. Yeah, I'm a little weak finger. Quit making me do this stuff. And, and so you're sitting there smacking them. Come on, you gotta do this. And um, and then you'll s discover again and again and again and again if you'll practice correctly and well and enough that you'll find your fingers going to naturally the thing that you want them to do. It'll feel correct. So um, so anyway, okay. So that was how do you know when you practiced enough? Uh, that's the answer. Uh, and then of course, what happens is we have a a panorama of things that we would like to do you know I'd like to play I'd like to do tap harmonics I would like to um, I would like to do sweet picking I would like to um, play you know my half diminished seven arp arpeggios four octaves on the piano and uh, and unless when it was almost no one unless you're practicing um, honestly, uh, I'm not thinking anybody has to do this, but unless we're practicing three to ten hours a day, uh, we've all got to make choices, and we got to say, "Well, I would like to get to the sweet picking, but you know, I got all these other things that are more important than sweet picking." And until I get good enough, and what happens, of course, is when we practice, is we're compressing how long it takes to do the things that we want to do. You know, so it took this long to do all of my important chords and all of my important scales and, and don't forget to practice ad-libbing and don't forget to practice this song. And then, but then, and but as I keep working on it, it's taking less and less and less time. Now, does it ever take this amount of time? No, it's not going to take, you know, five minutes to practice everything you want to practice. But it can take 20 minutes, something that used to take you 40 minutes. And as you do that and work on that, it'd be like suddenly you just go, hey, look, I got a little little three minutes there I didn't have before, and now I can add in this other important thing. So it's not that everybody has to practice three to five hours or ten hours a day. It's that there's a freedom there uh, to not have to be so choosy. Um, and, and there's no, shame is not the right word, but almost everybody has to has to fit in practice and be like, oh, I'm supposed to practice today. Oh, I got to, meant to get to that. And that is not doesn't seem to me to be the issue. The issue seems to be for people to become musicians. It seems to be, are you hanging in there? You know, and when you have a bad week or a bad day or a bad month, uh, you come back. You know, and you come back and say, okay, let me pick this back up and see what I can do. Uh, and of course, trying to minimize that time out. Um, you know, if you had the potential to be out two weeks, you're like, okay, can you, what can I do to just make this one week? But but still, the issue is, hey, I came back, as opposed to I practiced, you know, I practiced 50 hours a week. And I've done that. Um, and so, uh, which is just wonderful, you know, but... Um, I think the bigger issue is that we, we keep 
plugging away and try to work smart, try to think uh, uh, more about the bigger picture as opposed to an incredible, um, because most people, no matter how diligent they are, most people do not have the option. And, and again, I just want to comment, the music school, which includes me, the music school perspective is, is a, a, in general, kind of off <laughs> because it's like, hey, you know, I paid these guys X amount of uh, uh, thousands of dollars to kind of uh, cocoon, cocoon me for, uh, you know, three, four, five years. And all I'm doing is working on this music. And that's wonderful and excellent. We should all do that. But then it's like, that is not most people's experience. Most people are having to, to battle out to get any kind of practice in. And it's not that we would like to not do that practice. It's just that um, there's a lot of wonderful, wonderful, wonderful music out there by people who are are uh, struggling and working hard to get their uh, their hour in, you know. And again, not the amount of time, but the, the consistency, the uh, ease. Okay, so I've only got 20 minutes, and I don't see any other questions. So I'm going back to my uh, other source here of questions. These are all real questions from real students. Okay. So, uh, okay, I'll do this question. This is a, a, a perennial question. And um, how do you sing harmony? How do you learn to sing harmony? It's not a dumb question. It's, it's, a, it's a difficult question. It's, a, it's one of those questions with a really simple answer and a, a very hard, uh, a very much different uh, reality. So the idea on singing harmony is when you're singing, when you're playing a song and you're singing. Oh, may, let's go down here. So I want to G this to the knee. Oh, oh, may, oh, may. Okay, here's this E chord. This is an E chord. So it's got an E, it's got a G sharp and a B in it to make it. That's the only notes here. So okay, here's my E, here's my B, here's my E again. There's a G sharp, there's a B again, there's an E. That's the only notes here. They're repeated quite a bit. Now I'm singing, oh, may. So I'm ending up on an E, singing an E. So the simple answer is one of the notes of a chord. I'll pick the note that you give me an example. Oh, may. Now I got a S. This is a C chord. I got a C, E, and a G. And now my melody is a C. Ah. And now let's go, well, it's on E. Let's go to D. Oh, may. I got a D, F sharp, and A. These are the only notes being played. And my melody note is the note D. So we'll take that. Here it is. Oh, May. So the, one of the other two notes that are being played, I'm going, ba. So the harmony, uh, easy harmony, the natural harmony would be going up to the third. Going up. Ba, ba, ba. Amazing grace. How sweet. Sound. Well, the other guy's going, oh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Um, and that is exactly correct. That is the basic idea of singing harmony. However, uh, the problem with that is, uh, just for example, I just got through saying I was playing a D and F sharp and an A. Uh, so what about the A? Why couldn't I have sung the A? Because if I'd sung the A, as opposed to the F sharps, what I sang. So again, we imagine a stack. Got a D, got an F sharp, got an A. The melody was the D. I went to the F sharp, the middle note. If I'd have gone to the D, and that would have sounded like here we're going, Amazing Grace. Now, if I went to the fifth, it would have been, mm -hmm, Amazing Grace. Well, I'm making it better than it's supposed to sound. Uh, it would sounded like this. It, the point would be like this. It would sound empty like that. Uh, and then, for example, as the chords are changing, listen to these chords change. Mm -hmm. So if I was doing a song, oh, man. Like me. 
because all those chord changes kind of screw up the whole even hey man just doing the just stay here's the melody and you go up to the next one above here's the melody go up to the one above and just follow that along because all those chords are shifting all the notes you're supposed to play so uh anyway so the bottom line there is the basic idea is you're playing a chord let's say a c and the c e g and uh one of the melody notes is is uh, the c e or g and then let's say it was the e and then uh, then you either go up a third and sing one of those as a harmony you go down a third and sing those as a harmony that includes harmony on an instrument uh, when you're doing less, uh, like if I go um, on the guitar, this is the same kind of. I'm still going. Oh no, what am I doing? Do, do, do. So I'm playing an F sharp down here and a D up here over a D chord. So I'm just saying it's the same idea whether it's a voice harmony or an instrument harmony. Okay, I have no new questions there. So I'm going to go over here. And this is a, a different set of questions people have sent me. And let's see. Okay, how can you make practice more fun? Well, the first thing, now listen, we're all rightly, normally, in a good way, wrestling with our personality and wrestling with real life and I'm, what I'm saying is this uh, um, so somebody has a marvelous attitude I'm gonna practice I love music I'll make sacrifices and that person loses their job that that person um, is you know family life is bad I'm just I'm just talking about like you know some of them are getting in fights with their sister or you know or, you know, their parents lose their job or whatever. You know, it's just like there's things, all these things going. So here's this guy. That guy's got a great attitude, you know, but he can't do anything about it. On the other hand, here you are and you've got tons of time to practice and you just kind of like, hey, practicing. It's so stupid. You know, why can't I just take a pill uh, to play better? So uh, there's, I mean, the whole gamut of issues about uh, practicing. So it is completely right. So two things, uh, there are opposite things. Uh, one is, if you get down there and start practicing uh, and you start getting better, you should start to love to practice. And I just mean playing that scale, playing those chords, you know, working on this, working out this problem in a song. The, the, the degree that you will like to do that has a lot to do with your personality. Some people like practicing so much that they do not play songs and they're doofuses because they'll just spend all day, you know, I'm not kidding, they'll spend all day doing these exercises and all this kind of stuff and great stuff, you know, but then cumulatively, it's like, well, but how many songs did you play? Can you play, can you play with these other guys? Or did you, you know, you just, you know, so I'm presenting that though, that's absolutely true, but I'm presenting that as a, don't, don't think that the only thing that happens is people, you know, that everybody's just, uh, I don't want to practice because it's no fun. Uh, that's not the only... Uh, I, I'm no, I don't mean it like uh, you're wrong if that's what you think. I'm saying so if you, th you think that and you think I'm a loser, yeah, I'm, a, I'm like all the losers in the world. I just hate practicing. So there's another kind of loser in the world who uh, loves practicing and doesn't love <laughs> performing that much. You know, and it's like, well, that's, that's just as much of a dead end as anything else. So we're all in the game of learning how to manage our practice uh, both for quality and progress and time, you know, that, uh, again, it was, it was effective and I spent the right amount of time and I progressed like I should have. So, uh, so anyway, with that, every day that, and I'm don't, this is going to have good stuff, but every day that you practice does not have to be the funnest day there ever was. Uh, although, maybe every third day, should be like that. I just, just like, hey, check it out. I'm, I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing this cool music that I love. I, I'm getting some of this. I'm learning how to ad lib. I'm, I'm learning cool chords. You know, um, I'm just saying there should be a regular feeling of reward. Whenever you're really discouraged, and I've said this before uh, to as many students as I can, and it is absolutely what you should do. If you're really discouraged and you're having a really hard time, you should, you should just go and grab a song that you like and you haven't played at all and just or just play your song that you're doing uh, if that's exciting you're just thinking what would be exciting to me I'm getting so discouraged about all this work or 
you know, I was try the last two days I was going to practice, and every time I went to go do it, you know, my, I had a flat tire, and then uh, the boss called me in early, and I couldn't practice, and I hate everything, and I hate you too uh, for making me practice. And, uh, you know, I'm just saying it's like you're managing your attitude, and this is a good thing. Um, so when that kind of thing occurs, and I'm, I'm not trying to be exaggerating, I'm not trying to exaggerate, I'm just trying to say, you know, you're discouraged, just play your song. Just play another song. You know, that you're not supposed to play at all. Just ad-lib. Whatever seems like a great, fun release from the burden of, I did not practice, I'm a loser, and I suck. Uh, whatever seems like, hey, you know, <laughs> that's not me. You know, in other words, I'm not that, I'm not a loser. Then do that. All right, if you do that for, you know, I promise, if you do that for six months, you will not play very well. But if you do that for uh, a day or two to kind of pull yourself out of that hole, that attitudinal hole. We are all human beings, and uh, we've all got emotional things that uh, attack us. And like I said, sometimes they're external and have nothing to do with us. Some of it's just our lazy, rotten attitude. Still have to deal with it. You, just because it's lazy and rotten doesn't mean that you can't just go, I shall not be lazy and rotten. You know, sometimes you can do that, but sometimes you can't. So anyway, when you're discouraged, do something that seems like a lot of fun. Uh, try to limit that. Uh, in the sense that not not necessarily in a day or two days, but just with the knowledge that, well, I just can't do this every day because I, I'm actually stopped progressing if I just play stuff that I can play. Um, so um, the so I'm saying so you so do stuff that is fun. Uh, you can now now this is my own particular thing. This helps me. It may not help you. So what I do, is I practice what I consider the hardest thing and or the most important thing first to kind of get, but really tend towards the hardest thing because I want to get that out of the way. I, I want to quit. What I would try to do is do the hardest thing first and as I'm going through, through the practice time, this is the hardest thing and this is the next hardest thing and this is the next hardest thing and this is the next hardest thing. All things that I've chosen to do that I think are important. And so by the last half, let's say, I'm in the, I'm in the, I like most of this stuff a lot, you know, and uh, my energy and attention was, uh, it's hard to get this picture right, yeah, my energy and attention was pretty well focused on these, in the first half, you know, it would tend to be that way, so I'm doing these things I don't really want to do, but, you know, and uh, so by the time half of my time is up, up well, uh, the hard things are done, and I'm into things that I think are a lot of fun. Uh, that doesn't work for everybody, because again, we're managing our own unique personalities uh, but um, so let me think uh, anything else to say about how to make practicing more fun um, don't do not you have to play a song and an exercise but let's look at songs right now you have to play a song enough that you get good at it right you assimilate it becomes natural uh, and that depending on the song can take three weeks to six weeks, five weeks, uh, depending on the song. And uh, so uh, you can, you can, oh, I know, I was just talking about, uh, if, if, if you're taking lessons, either with me or with anybody, um, you got to be careful um, of getting stuck. In other words, uh, we should have moved on to another song, but neither one of us has really noticed that. <laughs> that the song is no longer inspiring. The song is no longer producing. Uh, uh, what I'm not producing. Uh, what is it? Produ I'm really I'm having alliteration, but what is it? Producing progress. There we go. The song is no longer producing progress. Uh, now you can't you can't do that just because you're sick of the song. The song sucks. You, you, but the time to do it is to say, well, and, and I would do this all the time, and you should too, uh, if you're not taking lessons. Uh, the point is, is that it'd be like, kind of like I've sucked all the all the marrow out of this song. There's no more excellent thing to get out of it, even though I can't play it there very well. Uh, of course, there's a most of your songs you do want to bring them through to you consummate the song. It's like I can play the song well, and we tend to get here's a growing, and about eighty percent. Well, I think not growing enough. Here we go. There we go. Nope. There it is. Okay. So we tend to get tired of a song at about 80%, right about here. 
and, and we, we can't really do it, but it's kind of like our body or something's going like, that should be enough, you know. <laughs> and so we are frequently going to be in the position of having to press through. I'm kind of tired of this song, but I really don't do it too well yet. Um, but I'm just commenting on sometimes people, a lot of people are trying to be diligent and trying to be faithful. If, every, if we always bail on every song, every song, you know, song after song after song, we should have spent another week, two weeks on that song, and we just bail, and we just bail, and we just bail always, then guess what? Our progress, instead of this constant growth, is going to be like, you know, it's kind of kind of ambiguous because we never really consummate and be like, I can nail that song. Do you have to nail every song? No, you do not. Because, again, most of what you learn in a song, mostly, is, is that 80% in the first you know, three or four weeks of the song, that's when you're learning that little lick and that new chord and that strum pattern and how to count it. That's in general. But then on the other hand, we must have a bunch of songs, relatively speaking, that I can really play those songs. I can play those songs by myself, you know. So um, so anyway, I'm saying that you can do a lot of things to make your practice fun. I said, so you're discouraged and you're not as discouraged as I was talking about where you just do a new song, you don't do anything but, but you can say, I'm discouraged, and in managing my uh, attitude, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do, out of all my practice, I'm going to do the practice thing that seems like the most fun to me. I'm going to start with that. I said to start with the hardest thing, which is good as long as you're all chipper. You're all like, yeah, you know, this is great. I'm working. Then it's a great thing to do. But if you're, you know, kind of unhappy or whatever, then, then do that. And you're not so unhappy you need to punt and just go to fun songs, fun things. Uh, but you're like, mm -hmm. well, then start with the thing that seems funnest that you know you need to do. That works for me all the time, you know. Let's go to this thing, and by the time I've done one or two things that I uh, did want to do, uh, then I'm kind of like, yeah, you know, it's pretty cool. Music's pretty cool. I like it. Okay, so look, I'm, i got three minutes. If anybody has a question, you better shoot it to me because I'm going to uh, – it's a great question, though. You may ask a question. This is your last shot. I'm going to have reading this great question here. Okay, here's a great question. Is it better to practice every day for 10 minutes or once per week for an hour? Yes. <laughs> the, no, it's better to practice neither one of those. It's better to practice twice a week for 30 minutes. So that, that question is based on, okay, I'm going to practice six days. I'm going to practice 60 minutes. Am I going to spread it out? 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Or am I going to spread it out? Uh, not going to spread it out at all. Just do it all. But then I'll play, but then I'm not going to play again for six days. Uh, now, if it's a, you have to imagine, you've got some things that you're like growing and pulling along. For example, uh, just all, all kinds of things. If you're a vocalist, you're, growing your range. You can't just go, darn it, today I'm going to hit a high C. Watch me. I'm going to stay here today until I'll take five hours. I'm going to hit a high C. That is not going to occur. You are a growing the ability to hit these high notes. When you're in a, on a um, saxophone or a guitar, you're trying to play faster. Not just a little faster, but a lot, a lot faster. That's, that's you getting in there for months and years and weeding out little stupid habits and you know, your, your fingers are, like I said, are going, yeah, rah, rah, they don't care about you. And uh, so you're saying, shut up, finger, you're going to play. And so that's, you're growing a crop. So I'm saying there's things like that that need your attention. There's other things like, let's say, uh, a theory assignment. Uh, and I'm not talking about a dry theory assignment. It's like, uh, but learning what the chords uh, in all the keys are. That is an intellectual assignment. So you could sit down in an hour and learn that and keep it for the rest of your life, and that would be very effective. But compared to most things, most things are, we need, like we said, been saying, assimilation and natural and comfortable. This feels like the right, my hands want to go to this. It feels like the right thing to do. And so to produce that, I have to have enough repetition and uh, constant on this area that it becomes natural. So, again, uh, this question here, 10 minutes for six days or one uh, hour in one and once a week, uh, there would be many, many, many things that you would do exactly like that, that you would, I'm talking about 
like your scales. You might play, uh, uh, after you get good at your scales, uh, one kind of scale, the uh, pentatonic, the blues scale, whatever, playing all your patterns. Uh, uh, you could play them all in 10 minutes, maybe less. And so, yeah, do them 10 minutes a day because you, you did it. I mean, I'm saying there's nothing else to do on that arena, you know. And so what I said a minute ago about doing two 30-minute sessions, I guess that would be something like working on your song. And, and if the song was pretty hard, and then you'd say, 10 minutes, man, I, I hardly even scratch the surface. I, I don't even know what I'm, there's hardly anything there in a 10-minute session because it takes me 20 minutes to even get going. So then it might be better in the, in the two 30-minute sessions. Uh, so I mean, gave an example. So the first example was playing patterns. And again, you could not play all of the patterns uh, in 10 minutes, but you could play all of a certain scale and I mean major scale, pentatonic scale, pentatonic scale, blues scale, uh, in 10 minutes. And depending on the instrument, like flute, you know, depending on how fast you maybe couldn't do it because you got extra octave really more or less there. But the uh, point is, so yeah, that'd be great. Do it 10 minutes a day and that'd be, you'd be pretty much covering what you're trying to do. Something else where, you know, 10 minutes just, just starts it. Um, you'd be better doing a... a uh, bigger hunk, so you get more assimilation, more uh, mastery, these words, uh, before you knock off. And the fact that you're waiting three days before you come back to it, of course, is a big old negative. Uh, and the first 10 minutes back is your hands going like, what? What? Oh, yeah. And you got to think of it like that. Like, think, what? I don't want, <laughs> I don't want to go through that. I don't, I don't want, you know, to lose 10 minutes of practice because I didn't do this yesterday. However, you are a human being with different issues and problems and things coming up. So, you, we're, again, we're negotiating that. And so, um, so if the, in general, the amount of time you spend on the practice uh, subject uh, needs to represent the difficulty of the song, if it's, of, of not the song, of the thing you're practicing. So if it's fairly easy to do, spread it out. You know, if it's fairly hard to do, you're going to have to concentrate. And then you're going to say, somehow I got to get back to this because I'll just, all I'll do is crack it open. And then, and by the time I come back to it again, it's like, it's back like it was, you know. So, so anyway, okay, so I'm done. And uh, this is uh, Mark Teaches Music. And if you're interested in lessons, uh, go to uh, DallasMusicLessons.com and uh, look there and uh, either ask us about lessons or sign up for lessons or whatever and uh, the mark teaching music is this youtube channel and uh, we're going to do this uh to play and sing going to be questions and answers about uh music again focused on performing playing playing issues and things like that not not as not very interesting uh, esoteric questions about music but about how to make you play and sing better how to make me play and sing better so, uh, and listen, you should invite your friends and get them to subscribe, get them to um, sign on and watch and uh, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to go, and you guys are great. And uh, if you got any questions, just email me, mark at dallasmusiclessons.com, mark at dallasmusiclessons.com, and uh, that'll be great. And, um, okay, well, I'm going to see you later. And uh, let's see, here we go. Okay, see ya.